Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over the normal force and how we calculate the normal force using Newton's second law. Okay, just to begin with, we want to just say that the normal force is a contact force and it acts perpendicular to the common surface between two objects. So if you have a book resting on a table, the table exerts a normal force on the book. You can also have it on a vertical surface, like a person leaning against the wall. Uh, the, normal, the wall exerts a normal force on the person, and also on an inclined plane, you can have a normal force exerted by the inclined plane on a box as it slides down the ramp. And we're going to do this using Newton's second law, so we're going to practice using Newton's second law, summing up the forces, which Newton's second law is the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration, or commonly known as F equals MA. Okay, and we're going to go through four, I'm going to try and go through four different examples, starting with the relatively easy and straightforward and getting a little more complex to see if we can just explore a little bit how the normal force works and how it might change in certain cases. In this first case, you can see we have the situation where we have an object that's at rest on a horizontal surface, and the normal force is, we want to know what is the normal force that is exerted on the box. Uh, from the table and the mass of the object is 10 kilograms, okay? So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw the forces that are acting on the object. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw one force down and we know that we always have gravity as long as we're near the surface of the earth. So this is the gravitational force, the weight of the object, and that is typically denoted as mg. Now, there are no other forces that are exerted on the box except for gravity, but because the box is at rest and it's not falling down or falling through the floor, the table, or the surface, we know we have a normal force that is counteracting that. We're going to put F and then N like that. Okay, now we're going to use Newton's second law. We always want to make sure that we define the direction. So we don't have any uh, horizontal forces, so we're not going to really worry about that. But in this case, we're just going to say that the direction up is the positive direction. And so therefore, we're going to um, now use Newton's second law. And Newton's second law basically says that the sum, sigma, of the forces is equal to ma. So what we're going to do is we're going to sum up the forces. And we'll set them equal to ma, and we'll be able to solve the normal force. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to notice that the object is at rest. So therefore, the acceleration is zero and zero times the mass is zero. So we're going to simplify this to say that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. So the net force acting on the box, the sum of all the forces we know is going to have to be equal to zero because the box is at rest, means it's not changing its velocity, means it's not accelerating. So if it's not accelerating, then the net force is zero. So let's sum up the forces. Okay, let's put the positive force first. It just makes it a little easier. Fn is the normal force. And then that's minus mg. We put minus mg because the normal force is up. That's the positive direction. mg is down. And we're going to say that that is equal to 0. And then we're going to switch that around so we can solve for the normal force. Force normal is equal to mg. Okay, so let's just look at this really quick. I know this might seem really straightforward, but this is telling us that the normal force is equal to the weight of the object, okay? And all we have is the weight of the object and the normal force. So those two things are opposite and equal. And because the object is not moving in the horizontal direction, excuse me, in the vertical, di vertical direction, then those two have to be equal to each other since there's just those two. If the box is at rest. And that tells us that Fn is equal to the mass, which is 10 kilograms, times g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, which we are going to use 9.8, not 10, 9.8 meters per second squared. And a kilogram meter per second squared tells us that the normal force is equal to the weight of the object, which is 98 newtons, okay? So that's the normal force in this case, and that should be pretty obvious. And most people might just say, oh, that's obvious, it's equal to the weight, but that's how we know and we kind of prove that it's equal to the weight of the object. All right, 98 newtons. Okay, let's go on and do a little bit different situation. In this case, we have the same object, it's sitting on the box, it's sitting on the, the box, it's sitting on the surface, it's at rest, but now we're pushing down. Somebody is pushing down on the object with a force of 40 newtons. So let's just say we're gonna draw the forces again same thing, draw the forces. This is the force of gravity. We'll label that mg. Somebody's pushing down on the box. So we're going to draw that pushing down also. And I'm going to label that force 
um, as an applied force. I'm going to put F A, that's the applied force. And then the box is not moving up or down, so therefore we have the normal force is pointing up in this direction. So once again, we have up is the positive direction, and we're, once again, we're going to sum up the forces. So we know Newton's second law, the sum of the forces is equal to MA. Now it does say the box is at rest on the horizontal surface, so once again, the acceleration is, is zero, so therefore the sum of the forces, or the net force we know, has to be zero. Okay, now let's sum up the forces. We have one force in the positive direction, that's Fn, and I like to write the positive one first, so we don't worry about the negatives in the front. And then we know that the, there's two forces pointing down, that's the applied force and the weight of the object, mg, and that is equal to zero. All right, now let's solve for the normal force. We know that the normal force, put this up here, the normal force therefore is going to be equal to Fa plus Mg. Okay, I just added Fa and Mg to both sides, and I get that equation. That tells us that the normal force is therefore going to be equal to the applied force, which in the problem tells us it's 40 newtons plus mg. Now we figured out from the previous uh, problem that mg, the weight of the object, is 98 newtons. So I'm just going to put that in there. And that tells us that therefore the normal force is equal to 138 newtons. Okay? So it kind of makes sense that the normal force, the force that the table is applying to the box, is equal to the weight of the object plus the applied force, okay, especially because it's not moving. So when we push harder, the table pushes back harder, okay? So therefore, we added those two forces together, and we got that the normal force was equal to 138 newtons. All right, let's kind of try the next one. All right, once again, we have the same general situation. We have the box sitting on the table, 10 kilograms. It has a weight, and this time the box is being pulled up with a force of 40 newtons. Now we already know the weight of the object is 98 newtons. There's a force of 40 newtons up. Now that, just because we're pulling up, the force of the upward pull, the applied force in this case, is less than the weight of the object. So we know that the object is not moving upwards. Okay, you have to kind of know that conceptually because the weight of the object is still mg. We know that's 98 newtons. We have a upward force, an applied force, well that force, as it tells us in the problem, is uh, 40 newtons, that's less than the weight, so the object is not being listed, lifted off, okay, and then also, therefore, we're going to have a normal force, okay, so there's a little bit of conceptual understanding there about the fact that there is still a normal force because the box is not being lifted up, all right, and that's, those are the forces, we're still saying up is in the positive direction, and therefore, we're going to sum up the forces once again. It's just good to write everything out. Even though we've done this twice already, let's just write it all out, keep it all straight. Once again, we know the object is not being moved upwards because the applied force is less than the weight. So therefore, we know that the acceleration is zero. So the sum of the forces, or the net force, therefore, is still equal to zero. And that tells us that the sum of the forces, now we're going to sum them up. Okay, I shouldn't. Just, just sum up the forces. So we have two forces in the positive direction. We have the normal force plus uh, the applied force and minus mg, because mg is pointing down. And we know that that is equal to zero. All right, therefore we know that the normal force is equal to and we're going to move mg to the other side, so it's going to be mg, a positive, positive mg, minus the applied force. Okay, now before we go on and kind of plug the numbers in, just let's just look at this. The normal force that it is telling us is that it is the weight of the object minus the applied force. So the force by the table on the box is the weight minus the applied force. Well, the applied force is pulling up, so it should make sense that it's kind of taking away some of the force from the normal force or relieving some of the force. All right, so in this case, the normal force is mg, which we know is 98 newtons, and it's minus the applied force, and the applied force is 40 newtons. 
that tells us that the force on the table, excuse me, on the box by the table is simply going to be 58 newtons, okay? So in the first case, the normal force was equal to the weight. In the second case, the normal force was more than the weight. In this case, because we're pulling up, the normal force is less than the weight of the box, okay? So I think those are some good conceptual understandings that you should have. All right, let's try one more. Let me squeeze one more in. Now it says we have a 10 kilogram sitting on a horizontal surface. What happens if you pull up on the box with a force of 110 newtons? So once again, let's draw the forces, okay? We're on Earth, we're near Earth at least, and therefore we're going to have the weight of the object is mg. We have an applied force, all right? Now remember, the weight of the object is 98 newtons. The applied force is 110 newtons. So in this case, because the pull up is more than the weight, we know that there is no normal force. So all we have is these two forces, okay? And we know because it's an unbalanced force, the upward force is greater than the downward force. Therefore, we know that there's going to be some acceleration in this case. So we know that the acceleration is not going to be zero. All right, so let's uh, figure out what the acceleration is. The sum of the forces is equal to ma. ma is something more than zero. It's not zero this time. So we're going to sum, let's just actually solve for the acceleration. So we're going to solve for the acceleration. The acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces, oops, that's supposed to be my sigma, the sum of the forces divided by the mass of the object. That tells us that the acceleration, now we're going to sum up the forces just like we did before. We have Fa up, negative mg, divided by the mass. Okay, so let's plug our numbers in. The acceleration is equal to the applied force, which is 110 newtons, minus the weight, 98 newtons, divided by the mass of 10 kilograms. All right, the acceleration is equal, in this case, to 12 newtons, 110 minus 98, divided by 10 kilograms. This should obviously be kilograms. That tells us that the box is accelerating, and it does have an acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared. Okay, that is the acceleration of the box. In this case, because the applied force is greater than the weight, we know there's no normal force, and so we're not including the normal force in the sum of our forces. And also we know, therefore, that the box is accelerating. We have a positive acceleration. It's accelerating in the positive direction at 1.2 meters per second squared. Okay? So I think that's a really good uh, opening exercise and some conceptual ideas to think about for the normal force, how it can change, and how it's not always equal to the weight of the object, and how we can use Newton's second law to find the normal force and the acceleration. Okay? So thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful, and we will see you next time.